When did you realize you were obsessed with cinematography? Hmm. Okay. So I w I was obsessed with movies very young. I'm trying to think of when I became conscious of cinematography, even as a job or a, as a position on it. To be honest, I don't know. I think I even probably ahead of cinematography is I think I was stricken by production design, not realizing that it was production design. Because again, I was so I've always been so attracted to the atmosphere being built. And so often, uh, the production design is doing, especially if you're leaning into something fantastical, you know, like the, the movie Legend was something I loved as a kid. And the sets are amazing. And I think that was the first time I realized, oh, somebody's doing this, somebody's making this happen. But cinematography, I mean, I, I would think somewhere in college, and I think it's specifically that it was the camera side of things. Since I had always enjoyed photography and just cameras in general, I realized somebody on set is touching a camera. And so I think that was the first inkling. But to be honest, I don't, it feels so gradual, my cinematography and I discovering each other. It almost feels like, you know, it's one, like a, like a romance where you're like, oh, we were 12 years old and we used to play at the beach together. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, over the years you start to be like, hey, she's kind of hot or whatever. And, and those little flirtations, like I, it just didn't occur to me. And then all of a sudden one day you're like, oh, I, I think I'm in love. Like this is, this is, it's a thing. So I, I think for me in college, when people started asking me to shoot their films, I think was, so being a cinematographer, I think was the first time I started to realize like, oh, I really love this. Because even with films that I'd loved, I was, while I was aware of cinematographers, it, I never thought of it as a job for myself somehow. So I don't know, it's sort of strange to think now because that's what my life is kind of built around is cinematography in a lot of ways. I mean, all the things I read about and find myself fascinated by and I, I, I'm i always paying attention to cameras and lights and and light in general, you know, I'm, I'm so conscious of all these things now, but yeah, it, I really don't even remember where cinematography and I found each other, it's strange. Do you think because uh, you know you went to Humboldt State, you got like a double graduate degree? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got two masters up there, and and again, it was so one was in screenwriting and one was in film production. And because our school was so small, it was really geared more toward uh, documentary and experimental film. And I, it really feels like a stroke of luck in timing. When I was there, there were other students who joined at the same time, a bunch of talented writers, directors, and all of us were geared toward narrative. And because the department was so small, we almost created a path together, whereas normally it was documentary or experimental, we kind of forged our own path of narrative, you know, with the professors as well. Um, and you know, the experimental element really found its, I really loved experimental film and discovering like Maya Darren and Stan Brakhage, these like, you know, gods of experimental film, but most people haven't heard of them. And I just loved it. They were these weird, esoteric, bizarre films. And I, you know, I made films where I was scratching the emulsion and coloring that and, you know, conforming by hand and having physical negatives in my hand. It, I, I really dug that. And I think it's had a real effect on my approach to cinematography for sure. There's something very tactile that I lean into. I like, I like the things that I shoot to have a, a tactile, um, almost messiness to them. It's, it's interesting. And I assume that's where that came from, but I don't, I don't really know. Do you ever question, had you gone to another college, maybe they, they would have been more regimented? Like, did you have a lot of freedom there? Yeah, we had a ton of freedom in our program. And I, the first year that I went there, it was a fluke. I went, uh, before I went to grad school, 
when I was an undergrad, I did an undergrad in Massachusetts, UMass Amherst, and they had a domestic exchange program, which I had no, I'd never even heard of. And the day I walked into their office, I just asked like, hey, how does this work? And they gave me a bunch of brochures and they were like, oh, here's a book of all the schools that we have a partnership with. You could go to any of these schools in theory. And so I went to the library. I took it right then, went to the library, sat with it for a couple hours. And I was looking for a place that had film classes that was not in a city and that was near the ocean. And that was it. And it was like three or four schools that fit that. And Humboldt, which I had never heard of at the time, the deadline for that was like that day or that week. And so I went back, I had my little list, and I went back to the, the woman who gave me the brochures, and I asked, like, how strict are these deadlines? Like, if I wanted to apply to Humboldt, could I still do it? She's like, you know, I'm not sure, let me check. And she goes into her office, and she gets on the phone, and she's on the phone for a while. And she finally comes out, and is like, okay, you're enrolled for the fall. <laughs> and I, I was just like, well, I didn't even know if I wanted to do any of this, but I just was like, screw it. And I just went, I went across the country, I went to that school and that year changed my life. I mean, dramatically. It was really, I had been at UMass, they didn't have a film program. So I was taking uh, film theory classes. They had a sprinkling of those, uh, but no production. And I went out to that school and I wrote plays that got produced. I was acting in plays. I was making films hand over fist. Like we were all, it was just, this, like I mentioned, there was there were these other students that were hungry in the same way I was, and I just spent a year producing content constantly, and because the department was small, we just kind of forged our own path. And I think uh, to to your initial question, if I had gone to a school with more structure. I don't know how that would have gone. I don't know, structure and I have not always been the best of friends. So I do wonder what would have happened. And I, you know, I used to be a painfully shy person and that year in Humboldt really opened me up. And I do wonder if I went to a, a school with more rules, maybe I never would have opened up, I don't know. And I had writing teachers and film teachers that I bonded with and, I, you know, the classes were smaller, so you have the opportunity to bond. And yeah, I mean, I, it, all, it was, I remember that was the first time in my life where I started to believe in fate. I was just like, you know, I stumbled into the school and it changed my life, I think, inarguably for the better, personality-wise, work ethic-wise, uh, opening my eyes up to different approaches to art and experimental film and all these things that, I just, I hadn't planned on any of them. And then all of them really just sunk their hooks into me, so. I've yeah, heard it's a true. magical place up there. Very, not just the way it looks, but also the mindset. Yes, for sure, yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I'm more of, a, I mean, I've been in LA now for 15 years, but I, uh, I'm a nature boy, I'm a country boy. So up there, you know, I worked really hard but then my breaks, I'd go off into the most beautiful forests in the world to take a walk and all that. And I think that really nurtured me and, and you know, helped my soul a bit for sure.